Hey, hi, this is Vivek and welcome to this day one part one video of this DP workshop. In this video, we're going to talk about recursion, backtracking and DP specifically about D recursion and how do you model problems using backtracking formulation. So let's get into the particular video and the main motive for this particular day is understanding forming recursions, right? So recursion in a basic sense is function calling itself. You might have heard about these basic recursion functions like factorial of Fibonacci. So factorial of X is nothing but X factorial is equal to one into two into three up till X. So what we do over here is that if you have to calculate factorial of X, multiply X with factorial of X minus one, which if it's correct, it should return X minus one into X minus two, so on up till one. And if you multiply, you can see that's correct. It will call itself go all through the base and then it will go till zero and then return one because factorial of zero is one. This is one basic recursion. Another basic recursion that you might see is this Fibonacci of X, where if you have to calculate a Fibonacci series, F of N equal to F of N minus one plus F of N minus two, this is called Fibonacci series and uh, X is equal to zero and one. These are base cases, which means you have return one. So base cases are the place where your recursion stops and you have a default value. Rest is you use a smaller or a like for X, you're using X minus one, X minus two. So use smaller values that are there for calculating the value of the current state, right? So this is what we generally say as standard recursion calling itself, right? A small like mental model that we want to build around recursion is this, that when you have factorial of five, factorial of three, factorial of four, sorry, that is going to call factorial of three, factorial of three is going to call factorial of two, factorial of two is going to call factorial of one, and then it's going to call zero. So when factorial of four calls factorial of three, we are going to assume that it's an independent call, right? This is an independent interaction. This is an independent interaction. This is an independent interaction, right? So this is how we're going to break the mind that think when you're thinking about factorial four, think about just interaction between four, factorial four and factorial three. That's the only interaction that we are concerned right now. Uh, in general, you also have these base case at the end where this is the place where the code is going to stop because as soon as X gets to zero, this is called base case. When X gets to zero, you're going to stop and you're going to return one. So this is called base case. This is the final interaction that happens. Now what happens is this is going to return one. Okay. This is going to return one multiplied by one, which is one into one, which is one. So for factorial of two, the calculation is two into factorial of one, which is one in this case. So this is going to return two. Similarly, three into two is three into the return value is going to be six, four into six is going to return 24. So this is how the recursion works. When you like, we call a function, it is going to return you certain value. And then you're going to return the final thing using that returned value. So the way we're going to model things in mind is with in individual interactions. This is an interaction. This is an interaction. This is an interaction. This is an interaction. Now you can understand recursion using induction. This is something that you might have read in your 11th, 12th that we're going to assume that the base case that when factorial of zero is there, it is actually correct because this is something which is, which we are hard coding, right? Now we are going to assume that when you call something like four, it's smaller value, which is like X minus one over here, three is giving, is going to give you correct value. The only thing that you have to ensure is that this returns a correct value. So when you're returning factorial, when you're calling factorial of X, you're going to assume that factorial of X minus one is going to be correct. Always. The only thing that is left up to you is that you have to use this value correctly to calculate this particular value. If you can do that, your recursion is going to work correctly. So from now on, we're going to focus on one particular parameter and the things that it depends on. And we're going to assume that with some magic, it's going to return the correct value. We have to now just merge the value correctly to get the final value of the current X that we have to calculate. Okay. So this is called induction that we assume that for X minus one, it is true that this is working correctly and it's returning the correct value. We will find out the value of X using that. Now this is normal induction. There is another form of induction called strong form of induction. What is that? It assumes that if zero is true, then obviously one is going to be true. If one is true, then two is going to be true. This is a chain, right? But it so happened to be the case in some problems that it depends upon multiple different states, right? So now strong form induction of says that 
we can assume for a particular x every value like x minus 1 x minus 2 x minus 3 so on up till 0 is giving us correct value we have to now merge them and get the correct value over here for x so if from x minus 1 x minus 2 x minus 3 up till 0 everything is giving me correct value if we can prove that x is also given correct value then similarly we can also transitively prove that x plus 1 will be correct x plus 2 will be correct and so on so that's strong form of induction in simple terms, if you didn't really understand these terms that I talked about induction and all, very simply think about recursions using one interaction that from this particular value of whatever parameters we have in the function, how are we going to retrieve it from a smaller value if you have that function correctly implemented. So factorial has a meaning, give me a factorial. We assume that factorial of 3 is going to give me 3 factorial. How do I get 4 factorial out of 3 factorial? By nothing but 4 multiplying 4 with the answer. So that is what we have to build for most backtracking and recursion problems. This is what we have to first learn. Okay. That's very, very basic. Uh, you may say that Vivek, that's very basic. I know what recursion is and maybe this basic factorial and all, it's very easy. Tell me something new, right? So what we're going to learn is a concept of level choice, check and move. Now this is again a concept that I have created to help you model problems. This is going to help you model so many backtracking problems in a very, very easy and neat way. So let's understand what these four terms are just, just three and four terms and they don't really make any sense until I talk about them. Right. And instead of giving you some definitions, let's understand what they are through some problems. Okay. So let's take a very like classical problem. The problem that we're going to take is there is a person standing at one st stair number one and he has to go to stair number n to win, right? And he can uh, like kind of climb one step, two step, three steps. So he, from any particular step he's standing on, he can go to one step up, two step up, three step up. He can jump one step, two step, three step, right? That's the options that the person has. Okay. You have to find the number of ways to reach n. For example, if the person is standing at one and he has to reach four, okay. One way is he jumps three step right away. Another way, way is he jumps one step and then jumps two step. Another way is he jumps two steps first and then one step. Another way is he jumps one step, one step, and then one step. So there are multiple such options that are available, right? So that is what we are interested in that find out the number of ways. If a person is standing at step one and he can make a one, two or three step jump, how many ways are there to actually reach n, right? So this is a very simple problem. You might already have solution of this, or maybe this is new to you, but we're going to learn it from the framework of this level choice check and move, right? What is the level choice check and move for this particular problem, right? So level, right? Level is like a way in which you can model the current configuration or the place where the thing is right now in a particular problem. In this case, the person is going to stand at a particular level, right? Or a particular stair. So I can say that level is going to be the stair number that the person is currently at, right? So what I can say is that I can write current stair as my level, right? The stair at which I'm standing is my current configuration. That is what my level would be. Okay. I understand that level is a very vague term right now. I'm going to give you definitions and I'm going to give you how do you model, but try to understand what level means. Level means understanding your current configuration or where you are standing, right? Or a way to iterate through all options. That's what level truly means. Choice. If you are at a current stair at a particular level, what are my choices? I can jump one step two step, three steps. That's what given with to us in a problem, right? So my choices are one, two and three steps. That's my choices, right? Check. What does check mean? Corresponding to every choice that I have, check will do a check whether it's a valid move or not, or it's a valid choice or not. So let's say I'm standing at N minus one over here, right? And in one move, I can go to N. Does making a two jump make any sense over here? No, right? Because you're going to go out of the bounds of the whole stair system. So these kind of checks might be relevant in certain problems. So this is what we will call as check that given the number of choice, given the choices that we have from the, for the current level, which of them makes sense and which of them are invalid. So in this case, check is just uh, check 
if in let's say one to n this is something we can write as a check right check if the person is still in the stair system or not if he goes beyond and then he's gonna fall off maybe right move what is move so in recursion right there is this simple idea that when you call a recursion right you have to transport yourself into that system which means let's say this person decides that okay i'm gonna make a one step jump so this person is going to now stand over here, right? And then it's from this new reference that you have to solve the new problem, right? It's a new problem of a similar type, but from this reference. So how do we kind of model it from over here? Shifting the person from over here to over here is what is called as a move. Okay. So while doing a recursion or a backtracking problem, backtracking means you're going to go into an option and then explore that option and then come back. That's what is called backtracking. When you move us, when you make a certain move, you go, you go that way, explore that option and then come back. That is what we call as a move. So exploring a choice in this case, move to step some current, let's say level plus one or two or three, that would be one of my moves, move the person from this step to that, and then explore further is one of my moves. That is what we call as move. Okay. So in this case, what you can understand is level was a way to understand what my current configuration looks like. It's the current steer that I'm at. Okay. Choices is like at my current configuration or at my current object, what is the choices that I have? So I can move one step, two step or three step check is going to be if the current choice that even I'm exploring, is it va valid or not? Because as I said, you can fall off the cliff as well, right? So that is checking if the number is the person is going to be still in the range one to n after doing the choice, right? And move is if that choice is valid, go ahead and explore that in recursion. So actually make the changes in the structure or changes in the configuration of the person and explore that. So that's the four terms for this particular problem, right? Don't worry if it's still not clear. I'm going to give you plenty of examples and we're going to explore things slowly. Okay. And just uh, for today, the main idea is to just build like certain model of what we are trying to do. I'm going to deep dive on all these things from the next day, even uh, next video as well. And you're going to see how these things roll in code and how we can delve deep down and kind of structure it in a better way. Right. But for today, if you can even retain 50% of the things that we're talking about and you can understand on a high level, okay, this is what level is. This is what choice is and all you are good to go. Okay. And be that DP, be that backtracking. This is going to help you at all these places. Okay. Okay. So this is the first example we are done with modeling it in level choice, check, move structure, right? For any problem from now on, we will try to think about this particular problem in level choice, check and move framework. Okay. What is my current level? What is my choices? What is like, is this choice valid? If it's valid, how do I make a move? Right? Great. Okay. So the next example that we're going to take is this famous problem called N Queens problem, which is find the number of ways to place N Queens on a chess board, which is of size N cross N so that we have no two Queens attacking each other. So this is like an eight cross eight chess board, right? Eight cross eight chess board. And we have to place eight Queens on it. And so that no two Queens attack each other. So how do you place them? And, um, it's quite difficult to find solutions trivially. I mean, you can try and place Queens and then see if they are attacking each other or not. Uh, we can pause the video and try it up on yourself. Maybe I can show you one solution. So one solution that I can think of is maybe a placing a queen, queen, queen over here in the next row. This doesn't seem to be blocked. So we can place a queen over here. Next row, uh, we can maybe place this is blocked, blocked. So we can place a queen over here. Next we can, uh, these are blocked. So we can place a queen over here. Right. And then this row, this we can place. And in this row, this is only column left. So we can place the queen over here and you can see that no two queens attack each other in this configuration. We have placed n queens, right? So queens, if you don't know, queens move in the same row, same column, same diagonal, like it can attack anything in this way. So you can see that this is not attacking anything in its own place. And you can check for any two pairs in this case, right? So no two queens attack each other. That's the main condition. Okay. How do you place, how many ways are there to place this way for an N cross N chess, chess board and for eight cross eight, it turns out to be, there are exactly 92 number of ways. I think, um, it's a number which comes up with coding. I think I've seen this before. That's why I know it. I think there is no direct way to kind of calculate it up, but yeah, you have to find it for N cross N that's the problem. Okay. 
So how do we model this with using the level choice check and move that we have been talking about? That's the main question. So the way we can do this is we can try and see it from the lenses of how do we want to explore the choices, right? So we have a certain amount of ways to place queens on the board. Let's say placing the queen in the first row, second row, in this column, in this cell, in this cell, in this cell, anywhere. Like these are the number of way, different ways in which we can explore placing queens, right? One way that I can think of is maybe go through every cell one by one, right? Go through every cell one by one and for every cell decide whether we can place a queen over there or not and try to place the queen over there, right? So maybe a level can be each cell, right? And then in that cell, there is a choice for me. I will go through cells one by one. That's that's how level is helping me. I will go through level by level and it is going to help me explore all the cho possible choices in an efficient way. So each cell is my level. Okay. I can go ahead and explore my choices for each cell. I can decide if I can place a queen or not place or not place. Okay. Check means uh, I need to check if I can actually make place a queen over there or not. So let's say there has been some previous move. So when you place a queen and you move forward, you let's say when you're when you're at this cell when you're trying to check for placing or not placing a queen over here you have to somehow keep track of what you have done for the previous cells over here right when you were iterating through like this right and then you reach this and then you are now deciding but when you reach this cell you have already decided what you have done for these cells before right have you placed the queen in this in these cells which cells you have placed you can keep track of that right so based on that you have to check can i place a queen over here Basically, if there is a queen in any of the diagonal rows somewhere over here, then uh, it's going to get cancelled off. I mean, you cannot place a queen over here, right? So that's something we have to check before placing the queen over here. So there is a check, which is uh, check if we can no attack, check no attack king queen, let's say. And uh, then we have a move, which is place the queen move to next level so you place the queen over here and then move to the next level that's how if you if you decide to uh place place or no no place i mean not place no placing on the board and move to the next level so this is what an options can for this particular thing might look like right that's one of the ways in which you can explore this another way in which we can explore this is maybe uh we make some observation that in one row there can be only one queen because if you place a queen over here a queen over here they're gonna attack each other right so maybe what we can do is we can explore the levels as rows that in each row i will decide where my queen is going to lie in. that's my way in which i'm gonna explore see this problem is actually about exploring every possibility right and the way we can do that is we can decide for this row this row this row and so on and out of that like if all of them together makes sense then we have a valid choice, right? So for each row, we're going to decide where we can place the queen. For choice, for a particular row, we will have a choice that which column, in which column we can place the queen. So in this row, we can place it in this column. In this row, we can maybe place it in this column and so on. Like the choices is which column do we place the queen in, right? Check is that if you, let's say, are placing the queen somewhere over here, right? You are currently at this row and you are exploring the choice, this column, okay? Note that check is a for, for a particular choice only. So when you're exploring to place a queen over here, you have to check if it is attacked by some other queen or not. And it turns out, yes, it is attacked because this queen attacks this place, right? So you have to check if it is valid or not. This cell is not being attacked. So let's say when you move to this choice and this row, you see that it's not attacked by any of the previous things. So the move would be attack from previous queens and this way uh, we are gonna try and move when you say move make the change on the board and explore the next level that's the move so you place queen place queen move to next level that's we are that's what we are doing so we place a queen over here and try to see where we can place now queen in this one so see, first we are placing queen over here, placing queen over here, placing queen over here, placing queen over here and so on till the last load. If you place a queen over here and it's valid, that means you have got one solution. 
right this is how we explore solutions for n queen problem now this is how this is what actually backtracking is that you are placing a queen and then backtracking to explore other options so we are exploring every choice and then we are exploring that in a move and then coming back and then exploring the next choice that i have anyways i'm going to explain all of these things in details just try to understand what level choice check and move means for now we're going to explore these in deep when we code them uh, in the next video but yeah for this one just try to understand how row uh, how the level choice check and move works right that's for this n queens problem for now as a modeling let's take up uh, another problem okay so let's say in this az dp workshop uh, we have n problems with us right and the ith problem is going to take you ti time to solve that particular problem right and it's going to increase your skill by s of i right the ith problem is going to take ti amount of time and it's going to increase your skill level by skill level by s of i points now you have x amount of time left with you like this much is the maximum time that you can allot right and you have k slots which means you can let's say you can solve only k problems right in the all of all the problems in the workshop which should not be the case you should solve all the problems but yeah let's say you have only k slots right find the maximum skill gain that you can make after going through or like after the best possible choices that you can make for the k slots and the x time that you have right uh, for an example let's say we have uh, like this is the time and this is the like skill point so if you have six units of time maybe one way is that you choose this and this okay because total would be total time of the problems would be 6 and the total skill would be 5 so that would give you a 5 total skill point and you are choosing only at most two problems that is also another restriction with us another thing that we can do is that we can take this and this and in that case the total skill point sum would be uh 6 so what we need to do is the total sum of the time should be less than equal to x the total k slots the total maximum number of problems that we can select is k and we have to make sure that we make the maximum skill out of it right that's what the goal for this particular problem is so uh, this is the problem right and if you understand this is the generalized form that you have these t1 t2 t3 so on and uh, how do we model it in the level choice check and this framework so this is the same thing that we want to try and do we want to find the maximum skill maximum skill is the sum of the skill points that is there okay so how do we model this up let's try to explore so it's actually actually about how do we explore all possible solution spaces now when you have to find out maximum skill you can get by choosing some number of problems it's like choosing a subset right we have to find out we have to take some elements out of them and then we have to find out what is the maximum skill that you can do what that you can get right how do we do that the the way we can do that is we can choose a subset out of this maybe some elements and then we have to ensure that the times that are take that are in the uh, the sum of times in the taken elements has to be less than equal to the x given in the problem and the number of items taken has to be less than equal to k in the problem that's two restrictions with us and then we have to make sure that whatever we take is a valid choice right so a way to choose subsets in such framework we can do it this way that we decide we will go this is the first level this is the next level this is the next level and so on so at any particular level like let's say you are currently at this level okay or let's say that this level okay so you are at this particular level so level is the item okay which item you are currently at and you are going through items one by one so if you are at this particular level what we going to do is we going to try and take we going to build a subset right so we can either take this into the subset take in subset or don't take that's the two option only right if you are building a subset you have you have a two choice for this take or don't take two choices two choices two choices and so on for every element there is two choices in general if you find out the number of subsets of a set is 2 to the power n that's how it comes out right so you can take this into subset or don't take into subset so the choices is take or not take okay is we are waiting right not but anyways check can we take it into the subset uh the this is where the things comes into action so you need to know 
which items you have taken before let's say you have taken this item and you are considering this item to be taken or not you have to ensure that the sum of the times that are being taken is less than the time that is there and then the number of items that you have taken till now plus this if you are taking this item has to be less than equal to k the check is x or the time and count check right this is what we need to check if the time has exceeded the limit or the count has exceeded k these are things that we need to check when you are like kind of taking an item right and then move is that when you decide to take this item or not take this item so if you decide to move you take this item and then you move forward into recursion into uh, let's say exploring the rest of the options and then come back and then remove it off this these are things that is that we do and then move is like take or not take the item now i understand that you might be thinking that okay this is vivek this is very overwhelming i'm not able to understand how is this actually going to give us any solution but have faith in me try to understand what i'm trying to teach over here the main thing is that what is a level choice check and move just try to get the basic constructs of these for now in the next video when i show you the codes and when i show you how to model such things in an actual code how the recursion works and stuff like that you will get the clear picture of this don't worry about that but for now just try to understand what is this item take a uh, choice check and move right so a simple very very like overviews level definitions i'm not a person who makes definition very well but just try to understand the level definition the way to iterate over all solution space efficiently just like in the last problem level was through going through all item and deciding what we do with that and that actually explores all options right because for every item if we decide out of the two options that we have to take it or not take it in the subset we actually actually explore every possible solution space right choices for each level what moves can we do i mean uh, what options do we have in the previous problem it was like take or don't take in the stairs problem there was like one jump two jump or three jump or things like that right check is basically which choices are actually valid or which are even feasible which are even like which even makes sense to kind of explore any further that is what we want to check over here and then if it is valid then move or make that change in the structure or make that change explore that option come back and then try the next choice that's what we do okay so that's what is there as a overview for this particular video in the next video what we're going to talk about is writing codes or recursions for this for these problems that we talked about in a backtracking way right and we're going to then like out of that take out the key ideas that we might use for a dp problem and how to structure codes in that case is what we're going to explore next right so that's all for this particular video see you in the next one do watch it out bye